Now, Friday Night Fever with Mike Ludlam. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Friday Night Fever. I'm Lily Zhao. Mike Ludlam is on assignment. We'll begin our night on the western end of the Upper Peninsula. And due to some power outages in the Besmer and Wakefield area, various games were played in Ironwood. Let's start first with the undefeated Ironwood boys who are hosting Mellon. Let's go to the first quarter, and this is where Mike Ludlam was in the John Kersnerich Gymnasium in Ironwood. In the first quarter, both teams missing some shots, but Jake DiGiorgio gets a bucket for the Red Devils. They're up 2-0 two and a half minutes later. Then Jared Sabluski to Colin Clausen, no. A rebound by Sabluski to Matt Derry for the bucket. Yes, 4-0 Ironwood. A little bit later for the Red Devils, Luke Hewitt. Matt Derry to Denver Shero. He gets the triple. It was 7-2 Red Devils after one quarter. Two free throws for the Granite Diggers, though. And Ironwood remains undefeated. They get the 15-point win, 45-30 over Mellon. Let's go over to Wakefield and South Shore. They're in the Ironwood Elementary School gym because of the power outages. First quarter, Wakefield senior Kevin Lane, 4-3. That's good. Ties the game up at 7. A little bit later for South Shore, Zeke Nieder to Blake Rio for 3-9-7 Cardinals. And they had an 18-9 lead after one quarter, and they would get the win over Wakefield. Besmer and Drummond found themselves playing in Psycho Gibbick Community College. Third quarter, Speed Boys coach Jim Partnin not pleased his team has squandered a 19-point lead down to single digits. After the Lumberjacks miss, Jess Mazan rebounds. Speed Boys logically with the fast break. Lance Burwald to Andrew Peterson for the layup. Short time later, Burwald gets the return pass on the give and go and hits the hoop. Plus the foul. The converted free throw gives Besmer a 47-34 advantage. Now the Speed Boys, Max Smartich intercepts this pass and dishes it in for the layup. Speed Boys up by 15. It was 52-37 after three quarter quarters. Besmer keeps on going. They get the 60-47 win over Drummond. Coach Tim Rutho gives his team some last minute encouragement. Let's go back to Ironwood. The girls are facing Solon Springs. First quarter action. Casey Lendine to Emily DiGiorgio for the first bucket of the contest. That combination would work a couple possessions later. DiGiorgio taking care of business in the paint. She had 20 points and 20 rebounds on the night. Always impressive by Miss DiGiorgio. Red Devils handle the press. Katie Peacepanin ahead to Taylor Milley. She finds nobody covering her. Keeps on going for the layup 7-2. Ironwood Red Devils battle on the offensive board. Eventually, DiGiorgio spots Christy Moore for the jumper. 11-5 after one quarter. Ironwood with the big win. 51-44 over Solon Springs. The Hematite offense and defense was rolling early. Emeralds turn the ball over. Kaylee Angler, easy bucket for Ishpeming. They're up 6-2. Then Manistee turns it over again on the inbounds pass. Jessica Spencer takes it coast to coast for the layup. She had 19 points, and that bucket puts Ishpeming up by 10. Renee Shooter put in a couple of free throws for Manistee to get them on the scoreboard. Then off the miss for the Hematites. Jessica Penhale rebound. She sticks the put back. Ishpeming rolls to a 49 point win, 69 20 over Manistique. Down the street at Nagani, the Miners found themselves with a 12 point lead over Westwood heading into the second half. Courtney Clicker makes it an even bigger lead as she knocks down the tray, 31 18 Nagani. But Gabrielle Hebert will then drive to the hoop for the bucket and one. Her three point play makes it a 10 point game. Then Haley Richards finds Alita Johnson for the long two. She had 11 points on the night. Lead back to 14 for Nagani. Let's go to the fourth now. Patriots double team Richards and Katie Rankin in with the steal and the pull up jumper is good. 37 25 minors. They were just too much on the night. They earned the 43 37 win over Westwood. Over to Gwyn, where the model towners welcome Superior Central. Ellie Olson finishes, and she gets the first two points of the game for Gwyn. Cougars would have their smallest deficit of the game when Katie Trowbridge drains a triple. 4-3 Gwyn, two minutes into the game, but then that's when they would start to pull away. Some quick passing, Tori Lauren to Tierra Taylor in the post. She scores two of her team high, 17 points to push Gwyn's lead to 8-11-3 over the Cougars. Then Olsen slashes her way to the bucket for two. Gwyn leads 20-7, 40 seconds into the second quarter. 
Cougars defense just too much, or the Gwyn's defense too much for the Cougars. Taylor with the steal, Olsen with the bucket. Gwyn, your winner, 51-26 over Superior Central. Tori Lauren also added 16 points. Well, coming up, we'll take a look and see how Michigan Tech and NMU hockey fared on the road and see how Iron River native Nick Baumgartner did in Aspen, Colorado. Well, the Michigan Tech Huskies hosted a very dangerous opponent tonight in Alaska who swept Tech the last time they were up in Houghton. So this one needed a little extra time to decide a winner. Let's pick it up in the third period. Tied at one, Nanooks on the power play. Marcus Basara to Tyler Morley. Alaska has a 2-1 lead. Five minutes later, they strike again. Nolan Youngman scores on the one-timer. Nanooks up 3-1 over Michigan Tech. Now, Mel Pearson told his team all week they need to stop playing from behind. And Alex Batan gets the message. He scores the big power play goal. Huskies back in it. Freshman, freshman Joel Esperance scored the goal, first goal of the game. He does it again for the Huskies. A big clutch goal from the freshman. We're tied at three. So let's go to OT with a nice feed from the corner. Malcolm Gould to Blake Pietala, and that's good. The Huskies earn the big overtime win, 4-3 over Alaska. Here is Pietala after his game-winning goal. Well, it's big. I mean, uh, you know, we, we had a superb effort in the third period. Um, you know, it wasn't our best effort in first and second. We found a way to climb back into the game and, and eventually win it. Yeah, yeah, Joel and, and Malcolm went in there and, and uh, you know, they just worked hard, outworked their guys and, and, and Malcolm made a superb play and got it out to me out front and uh, I just put it on net. The Huskies and Anooks are back in action tomorrow at 7.07 in Houghton. NMU visiting Penn State for a big matchup on the road. Reed Seckle pushing it up the ice finds Ryan Kesty. NMU who takes a 2-1 lead. A little bit later, Brock Mashmeyer testing the waters here. He takes a shot. No, but Sammy Solonen taps it in for NMU. They have a 3-1 lead. They kept on rolling on offense. There's Barrett Kai with another big goal for NMU. 4-1 Wildcats. However, entering the third period, that's when they would start giving up goals. David Glenn scores for the Nittley Not Lions, and we're tied at four. A little bit later at 1640, Scott Conway. Game winner there for Penn State, just a heartbreaking fashion. As Penn State comes back from three down, they win 5-4 over NMU. Both teams are back in action tomorrow night on the Big Ten Network. In some other hockey scores, Lake Superior State has won four of their last six, and they get a big win at number six, Bowling Green, 3-1, to one, while Minnesota State earns the 4-2 win over Minnesota to set up an all-WCHA final in the North Star College Cup tomorrow. Bemidji State shuts out number seven, Minnesota Duluth, 4-0. Beavers goalie Michael Bitzer with the win. He had 28 saves on the night. Another big upset in college hockey, the Finlandia men and goalie Andrew Brownlee shut out number eight, Adrian College to a tune of three, nothing to give the Bulldogs their first conference loss. Now, as for the women, they fall 10 to one to Adrian College. Bulldogs had 68 shots on goal in their win.